I struggle to imagine what could be more badass than summoning Bahamut and Phoenix, full-sized Evergrood and Titan, and having a teeny weeny tiny chicken nugget follow me. Aw, look at how he casts Barry with those little nugget hands. Welcome to 7 Reasons to Play the Summoner, and this job has been my baby for about a decade now, and Summoner right now in my mind is truly the whole package. It has powerful damage, it has mobility, it has extremely fantastic utility, all wrapped together with a diverse and ever-changing gameplay style that actually serves that with minimal bun bloat that otherwise I kind of genuinely doubt any amount of keybinds could cover properly. <laughs> Summoner offers all of this to you as the player while serving almighty epic ties to fundamental pillars of the entire Final Fantasy franchise, not just 14, these are long-standing, huge archetypes. Like for me personally, I grew up on Final Fantasy X and so Yuna summoning this entire thing is just my jam. I've been summoning Ifrit <laughs> for a very long time. If this video helps inspire you to take up summoning or you just want to help me out, please consider summoning a cat daddy on that like button and cat daddying that subscribe button. Reason number one is actually a blend of a few different points that I'm going to try and convey as clearly as I can. And so the summoner features a completely different style to gameplay functionally than any other job in this game. Rather than a specific set rotation or procs, you are instead journeying through summoning five very different summons every minute. And this is reflected in the kit in a very cool way too, which I appreciate a lot. There are single buttons, literally one button, that depending on which summoning you're in, which do literally five different things on that one key. I'm kidding you not here, this one single button called Astral Flow does five different spells depending on what summon you're on. Do you want a big explosion of damage? Bahamut. Do you want to do an actually extremely insanely powerful heal over time that yes, totally healers do notice, I can tell you for a fact I notice, then you have Phoenix there. Do you want to literally gap close from range to melee against a target and literally slam dunk dab on them? Yeah, that's going to be Ifrit. Do you want a huge burst of damage in AoE that just feels like an ultimate? Groot. It feels really epic to get it out. Do you want to clap in them cheeks with Titan 2 over and over and over again? Back to back to back, clap in them cheeks. Damn, I found a job that's like me back in university. Total top energy, by the way. <laughs> but this same really weird mechanic extends through the summoner's entire kit across a ton of abilities. You have Gem Shine, you have Precious Brilliance, you have Enkindle Bahamut, turns into Enkindle Phoenix, summons Bahamut, becomes Summon Phoenix. The translation is that the summoner has the least bun bloat of any job in the game. I find. From a software developer standpoint, even it scratches a really weird itch in the back of my brain. You have lots of little functions that completely change out their output depending on what state your summoner character is in, and I find that efficient, I find it nice, I don't like moving to touch a bazillion keys just to do basically one thing. To wrap up this point, I know that this isn't like the core number one sailing point saying the summoner has the least bun bloat of any job, but hey, we still have draw and play on Astro, we have minor arcana and crown play on separate buns for it, it, not even getting into things like red mages melee combo amongst other examples so i do think it's a huge perk it, it is very nice to not have all that bun bloat so reason number two is going to build off of that baseline of reason number one that's why that one was kind of first rather than this one is summoner has in its standard rotation four extremely different play styles that goes through every minute i said four because bahamut and phoenix are Ugh, I cringe at saying it, but they're largely interchangeable and feel a lot the same. But I'm going to talk more about Phoenix later and how it is actually a bit different, but largely the same. But for Ifrit, you're getting a long, huge, beefy cast time and then rushing up into melee range and then slam dunking on a bottom. It feels so fresh and good to dab on an enemy like that. I love it. And then Titan is a big heavy blow after heavy blow, slamming damage with full mobility and just... We're talking... Heavy artillery mobile cannon here, if that makes any sense. You're just weaving in, doing heavy damage like non-stop. Ten has grown up so much from the <laughs> days of Eldwar where like never used Ten. Garuda is a mix of very long cast times to a huge mega burst that yes, you sure as hell better swift cast to get under your raid buffs at the tail end if that is gonna be a hang up to get it under the buffs, like it's very much worth it. Then you have Bahamut and Phoenix that are just massive huge crazy bursts of damage alongside total mobility near burst window which obviously is great so my point is summoner does a lot of different things and it does them very and i mean very very differently in spite of the reduced button bloat like come on i hear people say that summoner is easy but then i see those same people just not cast ifrit or garuda cast or rush into melee range just to get swad like a fly ff logs has this level of variation across minimum and maximum for reason reason number three is that you do have genuine build variety on the summoner and by this 
I mean a significant changes to gameplay depending on what you build. This is actually a surprisingly rare feature in Final Fantasy XIV, but it does actually happen on the summoner. And so why this is, is because spell speed actually lowers the cooldown on Bahama and Phoenix, which Bahama and Phoenix restart the 60 second window for Ifrit, Garud, Tyne. You just go through all the summons and then you capstone it off either with Bahama or Phoenix. Current patch 6.1, when this video is going out, I can hit a spell speed of 2.2, probably when 6.2 arrives we can go even lower and then 6.4 even lower than that. But right now at 2.2 means my Bahama and Phoenix come up a bit over 7 seconds sooner, which is roughly a it's actually a little bit over a 10% increase. Now, if you raise your concern about it not lining up with raid buff windows, that's why it's really important to decide if you're going to invest heavily into spell speed or not. Because if you're just gonna brute force some Bahamut and Phoenix immediately, you're gonna realign with the raid win buff window really naturally with this kind of spell speed. But beyond like the number crunching and stuff, it's just fun. You're slinging so many spells so fast, it's genuinely a joy to play. I know that's super subjective, but it feels so weird and so different for a caster. It's so weird. <laughs> number four is that you are really a utility monster on the summoner. You have the number one utility any DPS can bring to this game, Resurrection. And I cannot emphasize it enough if I said it once, I said it twice, I said it 15 million times, Revive and Progression, Raiding, or Party Finder is a godsend. But beyond that, you also bring a metric ton of utility through giving an absolute degenerate amount of healing. And yes, healers 100% absolutely can plan around this and utilize it properly. But whenever you enter Summon Phoenix, you bathe the field in everlasting flight, healing for 700 potency of healing per player. And then you can also cast and kill on the tank or someone else if they aren't, say, topped off properly or something weird happens in the party. But you have an upfront 400 potency on that in Kindle upfront, but also another 1000 potency after that whenever they're brought below. 75% health. It's actually a really great feature because it's just like you don't want it just wasting itself if they're like full HP. You can pre-cast this on a tank when they hit 75% health. You're gonna get a really good effect from it. So basically summoner, there's no excuse to not use it. It's really, really, really fucking great. Obviously I should say this does stack. So if you're using Kindle on a tank during Phoenix, they're gonna be healed for a bizarre roughly 2100 health of potency and all of that was free to you costing you no damage or uptime on the summoner that's pretty fantastic viewing this as a healer is very appreciated just really capstone the utility section off is it's just like this healing utility this revive utility is relevant through all forms of content i made the point in my dancer video but the dancer has curing waltz and improvisation that heals too and i compare it to the bard where bard is super powerful in specific scenarios specifically with the um scholar with deployment to add low but like the dancer healing used universally is a plus having a revive is universally a plus whether you are at the lowest tiers of rating with like complete newbies whether you're in party finder whether you're doing progression rating in an ultimate the revive is going to be nice summoner utility is great reason number five is that the summoner features a ton of mobility and i really do mean a lot of it nowhere near dancer or other range physical because like you do still at least have four casts that you need to get off every minute and you do need to get into melee every minute for ifrit but compared to the other casters you're pretty much going commando here you're just free in the wind compared to all these other casters you are like the scottish kilt you're the scottish kilt of casters i'm allowed to say that because i am scottish but if we're being like dead ass serious here honestly the free range of mobility lets me do some awesome things to help groups i always will and always will continue to greatly appreciate mobility in this game it doesn't just help you it helps the entire team to do melee uptime strats resolve mechanics and it's very very much a benefit to the entire team now reason number six is massively subjective but this is my video and i honestly want to be serious with everyone is summoner just feels fun combine all of these prior points and you get minimal button bloat on a job that does a lot of different things that goes through a lot of different life cycles and it's moment to moment gameplay is dramatically different in each 10 second slice of a 60 second window not to mention you feel very powerful the animations are powerful the lore is powerful and i love that variety of gameplay and without bun bloat i get to focus more on the gameplay and what i'm choosing to do in the heat of moment and there is absolutely going to be optimization here hell that's why ff logs has such a long line between the median minimum the quartiles the median and maximum because there is factually a difference and an ability to express skill in choosing the right tool for the right situation which makes the summoner honestly not have that static boring rotation you really should be thinking especially when you're progging like a savage fight what are you able to do at this time like say you're in even end singers in extreme trial are you going to be using effort when you are necessarily going to need to dodge one of the red planets and then the other red planet which is going to go into the two 
double blue plan is probably not so you should probably choose something else it lends itself to you have a bunch of different summons choose the right one for the right moment which is again something that i'm going to bring over and over again as a major pro for me in any job exact static rotations are generally something i personally shy away from because i find this kind of style that Sumner brings very fun. I like options, I like keeping the cards on the table. Now that could have been reason 7 for the changing rotations, but instead I'm going to be a little different here and I'm going to shove that into being 0.6.5. I Unfortunately this video would become like 90 minutes long at least if I was just listing out why I, all the different reasons why I like Sumner. But reason 7 is simple. I've played Final Fantasy XIV for a decade now and everything you summon is so totally beyond iconic to the lore and fundamentals of this game and that's the summoner's aesthetic lore. But that further from their ties to the pillars of the Final Fantasy franchise as a whole. And the rest is just simply staggering. We forgot like a lot of people some seem to either have not learned or just forgot like Bahamut is a repeating thing they fought Bahamut in the end, unending quest of Bahamut in 14 we saw Phoenix there too we read about Phoenix and its ties to Emmett Selk in the short stories we fought all of these primals and they have had such a huge effect on the game simply put the summoner right now in my mind is truly the whole package powerful damage mobility extremely fantastic utility that's always relevant in any content you do wrapped together with a diverse and ever-changing gameplay style that serves that with minimal bun bloat that otherwise you guys know it, it, you'd probably have an insane amount of keybinds that most people couldn't cover and it's doing that while it's basically in the fundamental pillar of the entire franchise so do i recommend summoner yeah wholeheartedly it is actually my current main dps it's like my alt to scholar sage is summoner it, obviously i recommend it guys it is a blast